Welcome to the last step. You can see my uh, photo behind me. I have the updated studio. We had the foundation last week, but now the walls are up and we are underway. Hey, Frank. There's Frank coming in from uh, Portugal now. He's in a different country every time we have him on, which is great. Oh. Behind you. It's not behind you anymore. Yeah, <laughs> it's just in front of me, actually. It's out the wall. But yeah, I wanted to uh, <clears throat> wanted to start today out with, uh, yeah, for the first time I have some, some nervousness that just came up before the show, and I have a, um, a friend on today, my, uh, my sponsor, my old sponsor from 12 Steps, Big Book Bill, and he had called me last night, and uh, I haven't talked to him in probably six months and he called just to uh, just to share and actually share his gratitude for our relationship and our sponsor he sponsor relationship and he was just sharing yeah even the gifts that he has received through the spirit through our relationship and you know he says I don't know what it is you know you got from me and it was pretty clear to me that you know the gifts that I received from from Bill and one of the things he said, maybe it was just the set aside prayer. And when he said it, I was like, oh no, it was so much more, more than that. And then this morning, you know, I took my book out, my old big book, which has a, uh, has a friend of Bill sticker on the front. And, <clears throat> and he is Bill, big book Bill. And we used to get together every, every Saturday for sometimes six hours. And I told him, I don't think anyone could have matched my enthusiasm or my this desire that I was given through an awakening experience for recovery at the time, but ultimately for God. And he, he was there each step of the way to match that. And we would spend so long together, but every session would start with, you know, I had all this stuff written right at the top. Yeah, this is the first thing he had me write was the set aside prayer. And we'd sit down and we'd, before we did anything, we would light a candle and we would read this together out loud. God, we invite you into this room to guide and direct us as we seek your truth. Father, please set aside within each of us that which would block us off from the truth. Lay aside our prejudices about what we think we know about this process, this joining, and our spiritual condition. Remove our fears, Lord, that we may hear the truth as your spirit reveals it to us. Give us strength and courage to share your truth with each other and a real spirit of love and compassion for our fellows. Amen. And we would start that off each time. And, you know, he had 25 years at the time of recovery. And we would just... Yeah, we would go into this stuff, but there was such an openness to everything. And that's where it started for me, this, which I shared last week, you know, the yet the essential thing in learning is that we do not know. And if I can keep that set aside prayer in mind, like in every moment, then that's, that's literally the answer to every situation that I come in. And it was funny because Frank, you and I were talking yesterday about you know, your adventures as of late with looking at places and the process that your mind was going through with, with all of it. And it was like, oh, you know, it's always, and all I was doing there was to remind you of the original inspiration. Like, don't forget this. And when any of the thoughts would come up to hand them over. And then, you know, you started having this miracle there, you know, as you actually went into these situations and it brought up the, uh, from the end of, of the 12 step book, it's funny, that's the first thing and almost the last thing in this book is what is called the spiritual experience. It's a section in here that just, it's asterisk in the beginning of the book. It, like this is the answer in the doctor's opinions and in other sections that this is the answer. And in the course it talks about this as a universal theology is impossible, but a universal experience is not only possible, but necessary that we all have to come to this spiritual experience whether it's rapidly or through a process. And it's no different, like, through this. And at the end of that section, I brought this up with uh, Frank yesterday, yesterday morning. And it actually, it's, it's a quote from a guy named Herbert Spencer, and he calls it a principle. He says, there is a principle 
which is a bar against all information, which is proof against all arguments, and which cannot fail to keep a man in everlasting ignorance. <laughs> that principle is contempt prior to investigation. It's like what I, what I just read, the set-aside prayer is the answer to this contempt prior to investigation. And it comes up with everything. You know, it comes up in everything. We, this is the rules for decision. This is I will not judge a situation, you know, where I'm called upon to make a response. What happens is I make that decision, and that's where the contempt comes in. I, I've already decided, and, you know, with what you were going through there, Frank, having the original inspiration, and then, oh, it's going to be like this, and I would just bring you back and bring you back. It was like over and over, and that's all we do for one another is bring us back to that original inspiration. And I thought of my... Uh, my, my infamous uh, minivan story again, because uh, I always think of that when these things come up. And I went to a dealership in Mexico to look for cars, and I was with Jason and Michael, two of my uh, close, mighty companions in Mexico. And we went in there and we saw this minivan. And when we got in the minivan, I had like this joy, like literally felt like kids looking around this thing, like this thing is the best. And there was so much inspiration. And then when we left the dealership, all the doubt thoughts came back in. And I was like, I can't buy a minivan. Like, you know, I can buy anything I want. Why would I buy a minivan? It's not high enough. It's going to hit the speed bumps. Like every <laughs> doubt thought or any, anything I thought would come through. And then I had them there just to remind me, like, well, yeah, I remember how good it felt. Like, remember that. And then we ended up buying it. Eventually, I bought the minivan. And, it, and now I'm a minivan guy. I'm like... <laughs> I love my minivan and I've had so many miracles as a result of following that original inspiration. And that's all I'm doing over and over is letting go of any of that, you know, deciding how I should, how I should respond or anything. It's like, yeah, so that's what came to me as I, as I thought about this stuff this morning. It was like this contempt prior to investigation and the set aside prayer. It's the same thing that we do, you know, over and over and. Yeah, it was great to have Bill. I had to bring it on prayer last week that I just said, you know, we have these moments in our in our path where we're like, all right, bring on the healing or bring anything on. And it's called us to extreme focus here at Camus. We're waking up at 6 a.m. I was going to start a morning show and say again, Nicholas. We're starting at 6. We're starting at 6. We're starting at 6. So we wake up earlier than that. I wake up at 5, of course, but we start at 6. Nicholas wanted to make sure that you got credit for waking up earlier than 6. But we start that early just to, you know, pretty much come together and meditate. We've been watching a documentary together. And and this is an answer to my prayer. It was like I was going to start a do a morning show, and now the whole house is actually part of it. It's like amazing. And Part of that bring it on prayer I actually see was was Bill calling me, you know, because there was there was this thought in my mind I was afraid of actually merging my two worlds, like my old the people that I used to associate with so much and where I am now, and there was an understanding in my mind, like, you know, in the big book it also says, you know, having had a spiritual experience, our next fun function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness. And how do I do that? By asking spirit in every moment, what is your interpretation? What would you have me do? But I don't need to be understood anymore. You know, I have to let go of that, but it still comes up even with ones I was with in the past. And I sat with Susanna in my room before. She's like, this is the answer to your prayer. This is the start of your, our ministry. Like, this is the last step. This I've always wanted to reach people that were at that place that oh, I have to live in the world of this. And I was like, no, you can live in the miracle. You can actually, this is an experience you don't ever have to leave if you focus your mind and you actually, like the book says, the 12, if you let go, absolutely. You always talk about that, Frank. You know, it's like there is one, you always say when we get together, that has all power. May you find him now. And the original virgin said, you must find him now. And it's like, so I guess I just see this as an opportunity to, to actually extend that that original prayer that I had to, to, yeah, reach everyone, even the ones I used to be back in the East Coast with, and who knows from there. But, yeah, so I guess that's what I wanted to share to start off, Frank. Yes, yeah, there's a lot of things you said now that, that uh, uh, you know, there's so much to say uh, since I'm here, and, um, you know, I... When I got here, I, I had so many doubt thoughts. 
uh, all of a sudden that, that night that uh, David and Lisa arrived and I thought, I'm oh, going to get all this done. And, you know, the house and, uh, you know, and, and uh, everything just turned out not as expected, so much better as expected. And I had this story with the boat. I was telling the story to David today when, uh, when I was in France and there was, uh, you know, suddenly there was the, the a part of my boat that was broken. And then on the same day, a rope broke and then, and then the mooring chain came off and I thought somebody was actually uh, sabotaging it. And uh, so I had, I had it all fixed and I put a big chain and everything. And then five days later, this storm hit and all the boats ended up on rocks and I so my boat survived it because if that hadn't happened, you know, I would have never fixed all the, all the stuff. And, and uh, you know, ever since it's been, it's been like this, it's been with every house that we've seen, the ones that I thought I was going to like the most, I didn't really. And the ones uh, we moved into this house that I had a lot of resistance. So we, cause we got it a deal to rent it for a week so we can all stay in it now. And I had so much resistance <laughs> when this house said, why don't we stay here? It's such a great house. You know, it's so comfortable. And uh, for me, you know, to be on the road with David and Lisa is so inspiring because, you know, David sees everywhere these signs. You know, I always think I have to watch just because I, I get very anxious. So sometimes I don't hear the intuition, but you know, David sees these, inf you know, these unwind signs everywhere. And I have to say, they're everywhere. Every day, today, we saw these snails in the house. You know, they have decoration of these little uh, shells and, and these unwind signs. And, and, um, and, and I, I'm just, I just know, wow, this is exactly how it's supposed to happen. And it's, it's such a, you know, it's such a relief. Um, you know, I, I was... I was like you when I came into the program. I was very, I really wanted it. You know, I, I was very afraid to go back to the, to the hell of the, the, the using. And, and I wanted it. And, you know, today we had, we were in Lagos today and, and um, we were looking for uh, a restaurant. We didn't know, I didn't, don't, we, we've never been to Lagos. There was this big St. Francis uh, uh, mural, but huge, you know. It was behind us, and I said, oh, David, look. And he turned around, and we went, wow, and we took pictures. And then just as we stopped, this guy stops. He said, you know, you want a really good restaurant. This is a really good We were looking for a restaurant. He pointed us to a restaurant that was a tiny hole in the wall. And, and just, you know, it's, it's just that's the, way, that's the way life is becoming to be now. You know, it's always I take care of you, I take care of you. And then I saw on the mural, it was 1984. I said, oh, that's when I, that's when I got sober. You know, it's all <laughs> these little signs. And, and one of the things that almost took me out was because I saw on the 12th step, you know, on the, in the 11th step, because, you know, they, they usually have them on these banners. It said, having had a spiritual awakening, uh, 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 we carry this message to other alcoholics. But, but the having had, that's... Uh, sorry, it's the 12th step. Um, but that word almost took me out. Is how can a scumbag like me have a spiritual awakening? This is no way this is going to happen. And I almost walked out. You know, the unworthiness was so, I mean, it was beyond description, the unworthiness. Uh, you know, now, now 34 years later, there's still unworthiness, but I can, <laughs> it's nothing compared to that. You know, you know, I was saying to Lisa, yeah, that's when, when uh, I walked into the light, you know, in 1984, it certainly didn't feel like walking into the light, you know. It felt like walking into the darkest mud. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, now, uh, you know, I've, I've just followed the road. And ever since I've been, uh, you know, put in contact I, I, out of a prayer, actually, I was suicidal, you know, I, I said, I can't do it. I don't know. I was just reached such a, you know, I hit a wall and I couldn't get past the wall. And then on the, on my laptop, David appeared with, uh, with a Course in Miracles. And I said, A Course in Miracles, that's this, 
Marion Williamson stuff, you know, I don't know. And I was going to slam it. <laughs> this guy, that's not Marion Williamson, you know, and I, and I, I just, it was, wow. You know, and from then on, it, it was like sucked into a vacuum, like a, in a, to a vortex and it's happening very fast. And every time I'm around David and Lisa, this is faster and faster. So now we, so much stuff has happened that so many things, you know, and so many guidances and we're just following and so much is unfolding that we're, <laughs> we keep saying, we can't believe we've only been here three days. You know, it feels to us like we've been here three weeks because so much has happened. And it's always, you know, unfolding, unfolding, unfolding. And, um, and uh, you know, on three days ago, I was ready to bail. I was in my bed and I, <laughs> I woke up at four in the morning. My back was hurting my hip. And I said, oh, my God, and how am I going to get a place, furnish it, and be ready for, you know, all this stuff is not going to happen. It's not, how do they expect that of me? I got to get out. You know, and I had doubt that's about everybody. And I was actually, you, if you would have had a ca camera, if we would have filmed it, we should, you know, it's just this mad guy <laughs> in my hotel room. We can arrange was, that, Frank. I, huh? We can arrange that. Arrange, you arrange, and, and I was against the wall, you know, with my eyes like a deer in the headlight. And suddenly I thought, wow, look at you. and um, you know, from that, and then, and then, you know, and then I, I exposed it to Lisa, and, and everything just calmed down. But I like, I, you know, in retrospect, I like these moments because I've learned in those thirty-four years. That's when I grow the most. You know, when that kind of, and I have to tell you, this is the first time in thirty-four years that night that I actually thought about a heroin overdose i saw the syringe i saw the whole thing i said this this is it i've come to the end of a of a um you know to the end of the road again and now and everybody's it ends up that everybody's crazy and it was just a, you know mm. and but where am i gonna go mm. and there's nowhere to go yeah. You know, this to go and for for uh, me uh you know there was always somewhere to go and now that was you know suicide seemed like an option so i think in that night i went through an enormous uh you know i went through an enormous i or, uh i don't know what you know a, a layer you know a layer a enormous layer mm. that was uh, lifted for me. And, um, yeah, this is the experience, mm -hmm. Frank, this is the mm -hmm. experience what we're looking for. Like, this is what I was sharing about how I always wanted to share this with ones like Bill or, you know, whoever it was. It's like, that's the experience. How do you get into the experience is by taking each step. It's like when the step presents itself, you know, I use the example of a minivan, you know, now it's a house. Like you shared the prayer originally. You're like, I want to have some kind of community place in Portugal and this, and then you're all inspired. And then it came towards you. And then, yeah, the doubts and the fears of course show up, but it's like, and then we're here to hold the hand. Like, you know, it was like, that was part of the, part of my relationship with Susanna was, I will hold your hand through all that arises because that's all that's going to arise is all these doubt thoughts and stuff as we move closer to God, to the light. And it's like, but this is how it is. Like you're saying, each time you grow the most is when you step through these, each one of these obstacles, you know, these comforts or whatever they are. It's like, and yeah. that's the one that feels like stepping, you know, that's, that, that's those mud. It feels like, you know, we're stepping into the light, but it feels like we're, we're diving into a pool of mud, you know? Mm. And, um, and, and I, I, you see, I, I know that, I know that, but this one was very intense because there was nowhere to go. And, um, you know, now there's just this uh, feeling that I'm just going towards the light. And every time, you know, every time I, I travel to join with the community, every time I've had, I've had, last time I was in Lisbon to go to Kirsten's show, I had a, a reaction in my hotel room. If I, I have to, <laughs> we have to show the photo, you wouldn't re recognize me. It looked like elephant man. I don't know what happened. 
but I ate whatever it was. I, 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 it's just so intense. You know, people break legs. I get sick. I have, you know, just as we get close to Solaris and I know when I'm around these guys, I'm very close to Solaris, you know, and I love it. And it's fun, you know, because they're, 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 you know, it's not like we sit around and we vipassana all day, you know, it's, um, it's fun, you know, we have function and it's very exciting. Mm. Um, and, and so, you know, then I really relax and say, I don't have to do much now. I just show up and follow guidance. It's harder when I'm alone because I get so confused about what the guidance is. So I'm very happy that I have you to check in with and then, um, you know, like with the boat, when I called you and you said, there are no outside forces pitted against me. It's all in my mind, you know? Yeah. Now that's like, that's like your, uh, that's like the number one parable now that I'm going to keep calling you back to, because it's just going to show up again and again, that same thought in the mind. And I'll bring you back to the famous Swiss, you know? Swiss sailor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. We have lifted it. Yeah. <laughs> it's going. For sure. Yeah, even this idea of being able to join, like we share this on each show too, and you know, having <laughs> had a sponsor, and I was sharing with someone on the other day that like, when I first walked into a twelve-step room, I literally got a sponsor that night and listened to everything they said because I knew I couldn't trust my own thinking at that point. I had to completely rely on someone else so that I can get clear so I could let go of all these things and all I do for you when you call it's like <laughs> you let off all those thoughts and I don't join you in those like oh I'm gonna have to do this in the house and it's ugly and like we were in Mexico the 70s nightmare and all these things it's like <laughs> no 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 Frank don't forget what we're what our purpose is it's always bringing us back to our purpose of like of course ultimately forgiveness but in each situation just calling each other to that place is like yeah it's probably it's that inspiration being surrounded. You know, like now we're in a situation where there's two places we like, and there's one I may have a little more special preference to, and then I try to ask David all the time, what do you feel about it? But he won't give the answer, you know. <laughs> but, so I know, I know what's going on. You know, I just want, and then I, I, but it's so inspiring to see him and whatever, you know, whatever spirit wants and uh and then i catch myself uh you know i mean it's such a blessing for me to be now you know with them here in portugal and be in this yeah. amazing environment and and just you know sometimes just observe and watch how they behave you know mm. and um yeah, it's it's uh Yeah, that that observation like when I I was sharing with Bill on the call was mind training and when I say mind training most some people don't even know what it is really. And it's like observing, observing the thoughts and watching that thought with the boat, how it comes back again and like, oh, outside force, forces are pitted against me or whatever. And then to remember. It's like, okay, remember that thought. Like, oh, I was watching my thought. This is what's going to happen. What's going to happen? And then we have a miracle instead where we expected loss and that's not what we actually experience. And so that's what the trust walk is. We just keep stepping into it and seeing, oh, it's not what I thought. It's not what I thought. So then that contempt prior to investigation right now, and, and Camus also this other thing is find out for yourself. Like if you don't know something or this, this is like the universal experience. You have to take the steps. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're only just speaking words. So it's like that find out for yourself or because this contempt prior to it's everything. Everything in my life, like this whole world is actually contempt prior to investigation <laughs> until I actually go within and see what the truth is. So it's like with each situation, it's like to remember to say, oh, yeah, oh, I thought it was going to be like this. No, it wasn't like even trips home that I had like, oh, it may be this. And then it's amazing. It's like, oh, when you went back to Switzerland, you were like, oh, I'm in the south of France. I love it here. And now I'm going back to Switzerland. Oh, it's going to be my apartment. And then we just had a few talks like, hey, call these people this. And you started doing all that stuff and you went back and it was amazing with your sister coming. Oh, it's going to be terrible with my sister. No, Frank, let's look at the belief. Let's do this. Boom. You had the best experience with your sister <laughs> going to Portugal. <laughs> this house is going to be terrible. No, this is it. It's like over and over until we're convinced because we've convinced ourselves of the opposite. So we just need each other to convince ourselves and spirit. Yeah, that's a really good theme for the day because, uh, you know, is that anticipation 
of oh, it's the worst. And then you know, uh, one thing that also just came to me, what what's uh, interesting is what I'm becoming aware of, you know, because we are now looking at these uh, different properties, is that. I keep saying, oh, you know, this one is good because this, this and this and this and this could be, you know, and then I go into the future and I go into the logic. And then, you know, just so, so I say, hey, no, this is not about, you know, rationalizing it. This is just about the the inspiration. And then things happen, you know, like this this one guy, he's budging a bit, you know, selling it to us. He's trying to, uh, you know, d- during a staring contest. And we just okay. We don't get it. We don't get it. And mm. and and that's that's the sign, you know. So it's a total different way of making decision than uh, you know. And I I'm already been able to practice this, but now being you know with the two, they're like my way showers, you know. I, I watch <laughs> oh, you know, also what's really nice, this is this and this, and then we can do this. Then I stop in the middle of that. It's not going to influence any of our decision because it's not about that. It's really what the spirit want. And, you know, I'm just here to be helpful for the good of the, the community and what is, what's the best of the community show us. You know, and David was saying, inspire me but at the same time give me signs give me a lot of signs so these these uh, uh you know uh, unwinding signs are showing up everywhere they're showing up everywhere that's the make it obvious prayer in fact when yeah, yeah, when, the make it obvious, yeah. when they went to the temple there was a picture of susanna uh in the like literally a painting it was like oh there's susanna's in the house already like just these things that actually are reflections of our own our own mind calling us home and what the guidance is. But you said one other thing that reminded me again of Bill. It was like when he asked me, he's like, I don't know what I, you know, what I gave you, you know, you had through spirit giving so much like in our connection. And I said, there was something, there was this, this confidence that you gave me. And it wasn't a personal confidence. It was a confidence in the message. And at that time it was that the 12 steps worked and, and I lined up with that. And it's like, it's the same thing with us, there's a confidence even in our practice, you know, the, the morning practices that we've been doing together, there's such a confidence that I have that I share with you, like, you do it, you do set a goal, you do this and it's gonna work and you've noticed, you've found out for yourself and it actually has worked. Mm-hmm. So when you said that anticipation line, that brought it back to me, it's like, anticipation plays no part for present confidence leads the way because it's not a confidence in our own strength anymore. It's actually a confidence that we are being guided and we have each other to show us that those symbols are all around us, so. What I love is joining with you is that you memory photograph the whole book. So when I tell you, <laughs> you go right to the right page. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's always perfect. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so I think we're uh, pretty close to out of time today. But I just wanted to thank everyone and Frank. Um, and we'll see where he is next week for our show because uh could be still in Portugal, I think. And we'll, we'll be in, no next week we have uh, the re- oh no we have the show the the retreat is the so, week after and then yeah. following retreat I believe is the new beginning so that's very exciting so yeah. yeah thanks for for joining us and Bill if you're out there I love you brother thank you for all you've done for me and everyone else that I see there Sarah and yeah I saw Helena and yeah oh there's everybody oh and Catherine from now and Rich. Yeah. Uh, oh, thank you all so much. All right, we'll see you next week. Back to you, Jeff. <laughs>